Welcome to the Zach's Roundtable Review, a discussion of current events affecting investors as well as other topics of financial interest featuring the analysts and editors of Zach's.com. Well, as we talk this week, we have a Dow closing in on 13,000, but this rally has been coming to us amid thin volumes. And many people through the whole month of February, many analysts on the street have been calling for a pullback in the stock market. Is the bull getting tired? That's the question. And we're going to try and find out the answer with our panelists this week, Shiraz Mian, our research director, senior stock strategist, Kevin Cook, and market technician, Kevin Matris. And so that is the question, is the bull getting tired here? Now, Shiraz, you say unequivocally, yes. The bull gets, as a matter of fact, you're looking for a slow bleed in the market. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I think the bull is tired. I think the, uh, the positive news in the U.S. economy, it's all priced in. Uh, the worst in Europe uh, being behind us is, behind, uh, is, is, is all priced in. The earnings season is over. Uh, and for economic positive surprises in the, in the domestic market, we need even better uh, performance from the economy, which I don't think is likely. Uh, so the, uh, what I'm in fact foreseeing that the, uh, the, the second revision on the fourth quarter GDP will come a tad softer mm. than, the, than the first one. Uh, and most of the economic releases going forward would be in line to just modestly missing. Uh, and that's that's the recipe for uh, for 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 a steady uh, bleed over the next uh, six to eight weeks. Okay, the two Kevins don't agree. They say that, no, the bull is not tired. Kevin Cook. Why so it's not? not just the names that they share. <laughs> <laughs> they share an outlook too. Right. Listen, Shiraz is right that a lot of good stuff is priced in, but uh, you know the the fundamentals are are so strong that I think they're going to surprise to the upside, and I think most fund managers have sub 2% GDP growth priced in. Okay. And the, so the economy is poised to surprise to the upside. Yeah. Also, a lot of fund managers were timid at S&P 1300 and got left behind, mm -hmm. or maybe even sooner. Everybody wants a pullback. I know I do, and that's why we're not going to get one. So, so, you're not, so you are ruling out a pullback? I just no, I'm not clear. ruling it out. Oh, Listen, a 5% pullback, I would buy with both hands. Okay, but, but that I don't think we're going to get it. The market can continue to drift higher mm -hmm. like, a, like a slow train. It's pulled out of the station, and fund managers are going to have to chase it to get performance. Uh, and Kevin and I talk about this all the time. Markets tend to run to extremes. So right. it will go beyond to price in a lot of the good news. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and there's still some uncertainty about China. Is, is China mm -hmm. going to re-stimulate? When are they going to do it? And how much? Over the weekend, we got news from the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia that they're thinking about cutting interest rates. We are in right. a sweet spot here with rates. Okay, Kevin Matrix. Yeah, you know, it's funny because we got together last week and it seems like everybody is so waiting for this pullback, which may not happen. Everybody is just chomping at the bit to buy. And that, I believe, underscores all of this demand in the market. My, I, I believe what investors have to think about is, as you're waiting to nickel and dime the market, hoping to save 1% or 2% on your favorite stocks, if the market keeps on going, you're going to potentially miss out on 5%, 10%, 20% as this thing keeps powering higher. We are not at an extreme. Personally, I think GDP is going to be raised to the upside. I think there is a lot of upside surprise to the economy. I think this keeps the market going. So thin volume doesn't concern you two? No, not now, at all. As a matter of fact, when you look at volume, oftentimes when you're at these areas of indecision or when you're at these areas of major support and resistance, volume usually does dry up as people are waiting for a catalyst. Okay. But once you break out, you see volume quickly come back into the market. Friday was a very good volume day, one of the best volume days we've seen all year, and we saw the market hit the a new high for the year. So I am not concerned about volume at all. I Quick, like it. Quickly, is this a Goldilocks market for equities? Oh, but pretty much, not, not at all. Uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is this is a suckers really. Uh, everybody's trying to, keep, uh, to, to to get in to get in on the action. New Year, the fund managers that uh, that, that Cook referred to, uh, they're seeing others making gains and they want to buy stocks. Uh, but at some stage, reality has to hit them, uh, okay. and they will they will see that the earning season is over. A mediocre earning season is over, and Europe is not blowing up, but they are in a deep recession, and we are as good as. Uh, as we have priced in already. So this is the strong the manufacturing data, 
bottoming housing market, right. low interest rates, uh, emerging markets, and a global cyclical bull are still in charge. And housing could improving. be a surprise. Uh, uh, jobs market, too. Yeah, well, housing could be a surprise. Right. I can see Home that. Home Depot this morning. Analysts That's raised right. estimate. The high estimate was 45 cents. They came in at 50 cents. Okay. Things are better now than they Quick. were last year. The outlook is better than they were last year. That means it's going higher, not a sucker's rally. And not as the VIX rally. grinds down, the market can grind higher in small ranges. Right. I've Did got I to touch on a run? I've got to leave it there, unfortunately. Thank you all. Don't go away, though, because these folks are going to give us their top picks for the week.